morning folks home handyman here it is morning it's a little cool out and i got a light wind so it's going to be a nice day i think um today's topic we're going to talk about i need to buy a socket set for my toolbox here at home that home act toolbox that i got and i was going through all my stuff and realized i really don't have complete socket sets it's been a mixture hodgepodge of things and whatever so i put them all in a big pile and i thought i'm going to get rid of those because a lot of the teeth on the 12 points are stripped and it's just a mess so I shoved everything out of there i cleaned up that area of the toolbox and i thought okay now what kind of a socket set am i going to buy so I solicited a bunch of opinions off of the live stream. Um, I use Justin Dow's, and he's my son, and he runs Jeepers Creepers. It's a good one. You get a lot of auto techs and mechanics that participate. And so, you know, I asked their opinions. Of course, you got opinions from everything from Snap-on down to Pittsburgh. So it can get confusing when you're looking for a socket set because I do DIY work where I just do stuff around the house at home and light mechanical repairs. So I'm not an auto technician and I'm not a mechanic, so I don't need Snap-on. And they're too expensive anyway, in my opinion, but it seems to be what everybody wants when you're in the trade of being a mechanic or a tech, because they're reliable, they're very high quality, and I'm not knocking them. It's just not what I need, and I don't want to spend three and five times the amount on a tool when I can get a lot more tools. For me, that'll be more useful. So it's uh, just a matter of money too. So I started looking around and I kind of narrowed down my choices, but I want to talk broadly about this whole thing for a minute because on one of the forums when I made that comment, I got a lot of criticism back like, no, 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 you should only buy this. Or, no, 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 you should only buy that. Well, it, like I said, I'm not a mechanic or an auto technician, so I'm a do-it-yourselfer and I don't need the super high-end, high-quality stuff. And it's funny because you'll get opinions all over the place. I was talking, I had a problem with my car, the engine light came on, so I took it down to work. I always take my car and I asked, you know, the mechanic down there, and, you know, he said the same generic comments you hear a lot of times. It's not whether who has the nicest tools and all this. He goes, you can have all these wonderful tools, but that doesn't make you a good technician or a mechanic. And I said, so... I'm just curious for a second. I said, um, what's the difference between the two? And he goes, well, he goes, let's say you have three categories. He goes, I'm giving you my opinion. He goes, technicians are really good at the electronic systems and diagnosing with the electronic equipment and the diagnostics because everything's getting more and more computerized. He goes, a mechanic can basically tear apart any car, any year, any year vehicle and put it back together. And a master mechanic, if you really, well, his opinion anyway, the definition of a master mechanic. A master mechanic can do both sides. I mean, and they're incredibly good at it. And he said in the automotive world, the hardest thing to do in terms of, I guess, work-related stuff is work on transmissions because the tolerances and everything that goes into the complexity of them. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Anyway, I said, let's talk about my tools and my sockets. And he goes, it's whatever you need that'll get the job done. He goes, that you're happy with. He goes, you don't have to go out and buy Snap-on. He goes, he goes, George in here, uh, he's an older man. He's been in the trades a long time. You know, we walked over, I took a look. He has a mixture of stuff, okay? I mean, I know everybody talks about Snap-on, Cornwall, Matco. Okay, those things you're not going to go buy at Home Depot and Lowe's, okay? And like I said, they're in the trades. These are the tools that they need. Um, I'm not in the trades. I don't need those super high-end tools. So we were talking, and he goes, you'd be fine. You know, with Craftsman, Duralast, he goes, even Pittsburgh, he goes, but be careful because a lot of the ratchets and things uh, made by Pittsburgh, he goes, they're good, they're functional for around the house, he goes, but he goes, like as an example, the ratchets, the steel doesn't go all the way down to the end of the handle. And he goes, so some of them are cheaply made, he goes, but they'll serve your purpose. And I'm like, okay. So this whole thing, which started out to be an easy project, like, hey, I'm just going to go get a ratchet set, throw up my drawer, and it's a done deal, actually required a hell of a lot more thinking about what I want to do. So... Um, the forum all of a sudden I got a lot of comments back and I wrote them down because I thought well I'll make a good content video maybe just to have a general discussion so I took a look at the comments and I put more thought into everything and I'll let you know my decision here before the end and the one thing I realized the one thing I realized I guess is some of these people I'm not criticizing everybody but some of these people 
the pound the table on buying like you know Cornwall snap-on and stuff like that it doesn't make them a good mechanic just because you've got expensive tools it's all an illusion though not everybody's an illusion but a lot of these reviewers I think were and or are so I again I'd rather save my money and put them towards additional tools that I need and expand my capabilities rather than tie them up and be some brand loyalist and I'm not. I think competition among companies and brands is what everybody needs because one company will start producing something that's able to do more than the other company then that company sees it and they go to their R&D department and they come up with something better. So competition is good and buying different kinds of tools is good. And we all have preferences. You can do a YouTube search and everybody's got a preference about what they like or what they say they like or what works good or no, this one works good. And you can get confused. Um, I like watching the reviews of some of those tools I own myself. And some of them I can look at and say it's just a bunch of crap and it's, the video isn't even worth watching. And other ones, they give a really good review and they're right and sometimes they're not right and if they're not right I leave constructive criticism I don't do like these trolls do and, and badmouth people or I just write down in the comments was like look that's not my experience or if you do this that wouldn't happen to you or do something constructive I think when people do that to me I appreciate it when the criticism is constructive it helps me think and say okay you know I'm gonna go try that or maybe he's right or maybe I just had a bad tool or it's just been a bad you know, experience for me. But that doesn't necessarily mean for somebody else it's going to be bad. So you got to listen with some of this stuff with a grain of salt. But constructive criticism, it's a good thing. I mean, because it will help prompt you to look into what you're doing and maybe do it better. If somebody gives me a better way of doing something, and that happens a lot on the forums, I mean, I'm glad to get that response from people. And so one of the people who had written to me, you have to admit that snap-on tools are better. Yes, they are. They're much better quality. I don't have any argument about that. And I do own some snap-on tools, but I didn't buy them retail, okay? I got them Craigslist, garage sales, whatever, and I don't have a big collection, but when I come across them and they're inexpensive, you bet. I mean, I want those snap-on tools. But I'm not going to run out and buy them and pay three and five times the amount, like I keep saying. I can buy a tool that adequately works for me, and you can take that cost savings and buy other tools, or put it in a little fund to offset your next vehicle purchase or your child's college tuition, rather than give it to that snap-on driver. And that's my opinion. And the other thing is these people, you know, thrive on you buying the tools, signing up for the credit line, charging you 23% interest, and then some people are real frugal and they'll pay it every month and I think that's great if you're making that kind of money and you can do that that's fine but if you're not they have you hooked into this loop now and if you buy something really high end like a toolbox you'll pay for it two or three times over before you pay off that debt if you keep it amateurized over that period of time so again that's not for me I don't want to do it but if you're in the trade and you want one that bad I guess you it's your money you do what you want with it so Yes, it's a much better quality tool, but the tool that I have will do the same job as yours for what I'm using it for in DIY, and I pay a fraction of the cost, so I appreciate the cost savings, I guess is what I'm saying. And then we switch over on that forum to the issue of warranty. Um, from Amazon, I got, there's a really good deal out there on Craftsman Tools, and I was really close to thinking about buying those, but the problem is, is if I have to return anything, I have to drive about 25 plus miles from where I live to exchange that tool. And we all know, you know, craftsmen like a lot of these tools, a lot of things are being manufactured overseas and they're being brought into the country and they're sold under these different brands. Um, a lot of them are. Now, not everything, but a lot of them. Okay, so, you know, hopefully a lot of these manufacturers come back into the country you know, going downstream in the long run. I don't know if they will or they won't because of the cost savings and everything. But I want something that when I need to exercise that warranty that I don't have to go through a big headache. I don't want to have to ship them back. I don't want to have to drive 25, 30 miles. I also don't want that uh, driver, whether it's Cornwall or Snap-on, I've read the stories where people who even work in the trades have tried to return them. And I'm not saying all drivers will do it, but a lot of drivers will go, well, you didn't buy that tool from me, so I'm not going to warranty it. Or, you know, you 
obviously you misuse this tool and you start getting a lot of flack and kickback from them. Now, not every driver is like that. And I've read a lot of good stories where, you know, some of the drivers have come to the shops, they're like, hey, look, dude, no problem. Or they'll even meet you that day, even though you're not in their route. So there's good and bad stories behind that. I don't want to wait. I mean, if I break one of these tools, I've had this happen in the past. I'm working on something, I would like to have that replacement right now. Um, AutoZone sells Duralast, they're like, I don't know, like four or five blocks from me, so that's a top contending consideration just for the fact there's a lifetime warranty, but there is a lifetime warranty now on Tecton, GearWrench, Pittsburgh, everybody out there has got the lifetime warranty now. Now I'm also told Harbor Freight will never hassle you, ask questions or anything. If anything in the realm of sockets or the ratchets, brakes, or wrenches, you return them. No questions asked. Immediately, they go ahead and they give you a replacement tool. Home Depot will do the same thing with Husky. Lowe's will do the same thing with Cobalt. And all of these will function for me as a DIY person. You're not going to buy Snap-on and you know, Matco and all these out of the big box stores, they don't sell them there. You got to get them off of the truck. That was a consideration because I'm not in the trade, so I'm not around the truck. Now, the other thing with some of these, I don't want to pay that big dollar value. And I've watched some videos on people that buy complete sets, of really high end sockets. And then the one guy, which I'm surprised, very truthfully came out and said, there are some sockets in these sets because he's not in the trade too of automotive tech or mechanic. He rarely uses them. He might use them once or twice a year. And then I sit there and think, I don't want to spend all this money on something that I'm not going to use that often. So that was another way I was thinking how or what I'm going to buy. So this whole thing, like I said, can be a little bit more complex than I thought it was going to be. And one of the readers said, dude, just screw it. Just go buy a ratchet set and call it done. Yeah, I could do that. But like I said, um, I went through all of the questions and put some thought into some of the more constructive stuff. Okay, so like I said, after all this thinking, and we're not talking about spending a whole lot of money, but I still like putting thought into things before I buy them. You know, as a do-it-yourselfer and not being a mechanic, I just want decent quality tools and they don't have to be high-end. So I pretty much ruled out Matco, Cornwall, you know, gear rent, um, snap-on, obviously, you know, because of the cost and all that stuff. And I don't need them for the cost. So that boiled me down really to what do I need just around the house at home and to do light mechanical stuff because I'm not a mechanic. Well, I can get by with, you know, Craftsman, the Duralast, even the Pittsburgh. So I kind of ruled out the Pittsburgh after talking to a mechanic friend of mine, you know, down where I take my car like I told you. And so I've kind of narrowed it down to one of those and I'm looking more towards the Duralast only because of the convenience if I have to return or I'm unhappy with something. I asked him down at AutoZone, no questions asked, bring it into us. We'll either exchange it for a new one or we'll make it right. And we don't, you know, sit there and worry about, you know, whether or not you abused it. And I'm like, okay, well, that was kind of a cool thing, so I don't have to worry about that. That's probably the route that I'm going to go. I'm going to pause the video in a minute because I'm going to switch topics over to, uh, you know, what we're going to do for the day as a project. So I'll let you know here pretty soon because I'm going to make the decision today and I'm going to buy it and we'll do a little quick review on it. Um, I went with Duralast, so I'm gonna pan down here in a minute and I'll show you the tool set that I bought. All right, this is it, this is the box. 72 tooth, five degree swing for tight places, Duralast 90 piece auto service set. Wheel service, tune-ups, engine repairs, guaranteed for life, SAE, millimeter one quarter and three eight. And all the usual writing all the way down the line. So 90 pieces, let me open it up real quick and let's take a look at the inside. Okay, here it is opened. Got a little protective foamy thing. Okay, it's all color coded, red, blues. Got some hex stuff up here. Ratchets, which I've got more than enough of, but still. Well, they don't all fall out. It'll take up a lot of real estate in that toolbox. Um, we'll have to take a look at it in a minute and see. A little anti-theft tag, isn't that nice? All right. Well, so, all in all, a pretty good set. They're all six point. That's what I wanted. I know there's a big debate between six and 12 point, but I'll go with the six point for right now. Like I said, DIY thing. 
So let me pan over. Let's put it in the toolbox. Let's see what it looks like. I like the case organization, I guess. Uh, I also have ratchet organizers too. So we'll see if the case is going to work or not in the toolbox. Okay, here's a shot of the inside drawer of that toolbox. I got a bunch of big stuff over here on the end. Great big, probably for front end work, something heavy duty. Here I've got a bunch of miscellaneous stuff I just wanted to hang on to for the moment. Kind of like a hum box, a hum file. Kind of just like a box where you put stuff that I don't want to throw away but I'm not sure if I want to keep. Here's the new Duralast set. It won't fit in there sideways which would take up an enormous amount of room but it will fit in there like this and then I can always just simply close it. Slide the drawer shut. So for right now, that is the way I'll use it. Over here on the side, I've got a bunch of snap-on Matco stuff and I've got some extra rails for socket organization. I'll have to figure out what I want to do going forward with this cluster over here. This, I really like. I use it. I put it right back in its spot and I know where it is again without having to sort through stuff. So uh, Pretty cool. Like I said, 78 bucks I think was my grand total out the door. This will work for me as just a handyman and like I said, everybody has their opinion on all these tools. This is what I went with and the reasons why. Thank you folks very much for watching. Have a good day and hit subscribe if you like what I'm doing. And give me a thumbs up, make a comment, whatever you'd like to do. Thank you. I'll see you on the next project. Bye-bye.